That's Kevin. He's in Black Pistol Fire. So am I. This is Black Pistol Fire on PDX Spotlight.
Welcome to PDX Spotlight. I'm your host, Luke Neal. We are coming to you from the Ponderosa Lounge and Grill. We got Black Pistol Fire with us today. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having us. Yeah, of man. course. So you guys are known for your live show. Yes. A lot of bands these days make uh, records and they go on tour so they can sell those records. Right. Seems to me like you're making records so you can go out on the road and play these things live. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The crew here from PDX Spotlight, they were at the 2019 NAM Gibson Showcase. Yeah. Uh, I remember Mike Burling posted the video online. I couldn't make it, and it was mind blowing what you guys are doing. Like, you had everybody in that room captivated, and it just speaks to the power of your live show. Yeah. Um, was that something that was there right from the get go, or is that, I mean, how did that all work out? I think the energy has always been there, and it was a little more uh, un untamed. Yeah. Would you say? Um, <clears throat> when we yeah. first started playing shows, it was pretty much just, we didn't. We didn't have many songs, and so we'd have to fill time, and we'd just have these crazy jams that sometimes would be good, sometimes they'd be horrific. Um, but that's that eventually became part of the live show, is that like this kind of, I use this term a lot, but the roller coaster effect of like bringing something down, then bringing it to mid tempo, then bringing it up, and then making it fast, and then making it slow, and it's kind of chaotic. And then, so that was kind of early on. Now we kind of uh, you know, honed it in where um, the energy's still there, and that element's that the, the, the kind of jam element is there in some songs, but we've really kind of like honed it into like a proper show now. When you have more, like, you know, five albums of songs to choose from. Yeah. yeah. I think in the beginning it was it was just kind of like, it would go straight like one to a hundred. It was just like you get on stage and just, you know, go, 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 bang, 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 and just try to like really impress. But now, you know, I guess after a few albums we've got, I think you, you keep that in mind, like after you play like an hour and 20 minute show, you're just like exhausted, drenched in sweat, you're like, I need some more, need some more quiet moments in the set just to <laughs> kind of like catch our breath. So yeah. I think over the years we've kind of, you know, now we've, we've kind of honed in a nice, a nice place for the live show right now where it feels good, you know, where there's, there's, there's breaks, there's, you know, there's this, there's that, there's a lot of different stuff going on, like genre wise. And, yeah, it feels really good now. I think one song that encapsulate, encapsulates what you guys are doing now is Bully. Yeah. Because of just the dynamic range in that track. And as musicians, too, mm -hmm. the importance of what you do dynamically is yeah. is mind-blowing. Yeah, with, with any kind of two-piece or even like a, a three-trio, like dynamics are the, the, the most important thing in the, in the band with when you're working with those kind of uh, elements of just like two you know, guitar drums or synth guitar drums. It's making those loud, quiet, you know, really impactful. Yeah, I think that's, I think somebody said that to us early on when we were playing shows. They said, you know, someone said, you know what you guys, you know, really do well is, is your dynamics, you know, when you when it gets really, really quiet and then you guys ramp it up, that has a really big impact on the audience. And I remember that always stuck with some mm -hmm. yeah. yeah.
big response to the new um, single as well, Pick Your Poison. Yeah. yeah. Really great track. What inspired that? Um, Whiskey? Well, <laughs> no, no. Actually, it was just kind of a lot of things going on over the last, you know, year and a bit of, um, you know, it just it was kind of spawned out of that idea of like sometimes we all, like, you know, you get these moments where you have to kind of pick the lesser of two evils sometimes it was just like well we don't have an option we got to do this or we got to do this you know and it just kind of you know that that idea always kind of stuck in my head is that you know sometimes you, you don't have all the options you, you don't have too many choices you just got to make one or the other and which one and sometimes both of them are not going to be great but you know you just make the best with what you got and I think that's um, I mean, musically. I I think it was just wanted to get get something a little more up tempo again. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, yeah. And it was we went to Nashville to work with a, an actual producer, uh, this guy Vance Powell, and uh, we recorded it with him in Nashville. And uh, and uh, yeah, I think we were really happy with the way sonically it turned out. So um, yeah, yeah. And I, I mean that's what we've been doing. It's just kind of accumulating all these songs we've been recording over the last little while and, and hopefully get it, gonna get a record out an album full-length album by next right. year cool yeah because yeah. uh, deadbeat graffiti was your last full-length LP yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah yeah we've done I think I think that's the sixth song this year though is pick your poison yeah we've yeah, got a yeah. lot of songs we'll out this year it's yeah basically mm -hmm. like an EP that's yeah. already come out the game has changed with music releases. Yeah, it's yeah. the singles game right now for sure. Yeah. yeah well, because if, if you wait by till till your album is completely done, then you like once it's done, then you have to wait to get the vinyl press, and that's four months, and then you have to wait like four months after that for the press to ramp up. And so you're talking like once it's done, you still have to wait like six to eight months. Yeah. yeah. To like release it, so why not just release? Here's a song. And it's good. It's good to keep like rolling out singles. I like the idea of that because y y you're always staying on the radar. And then you're also getting a test of waters out too, you know, like if you release a single and, and you know, people are responding well to it, it's like, oh, you know, you know, you, you, you've, you've touched on something that's really, I don't know, it's, it's yeah. kind of an interesting way to kind of feel things out rather than, you know, um, you know, go away to a cabin in the woods, write this album and then, you know, release it and then, you, you know, well, I don't know. It's kind of like a way of keeping one foot in what's current, I don't know. Sure.
so for all the gearheads out there, let's. I want to talk about your live rigs. What's your preferred, uh, like, guitar amp and go-to guitar these days? Uh, I use a, um, a Fender DeVille, uh, 410 Fender DeVille, and then I daisy chain that into a, a Fender Twin, and then um, and then I and then I run a separate channel, a separate line. Uh, for uh, super reverb that I keep, um, you know, mostly low end, roll back a lot of the treble, crank the bass, and then I have a little MXR um, drive that's got like a bass and a boost on it to, to just kind of fill out some of the, the low end. Um, but n nothing too crazy. No, no old amps. I got a few old amp, like amps and stuff at home, but I wouldn't bring on the road. Tough to tour with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's basically just you know a pretty simple setup of just doing the stereo split split signals, and then um, and then the guitar. I, I I've always been using hollow bodies. Uh, like my casino has been uh, Epiphone Casino. I've been using that for years, and that's been like you know what I love to play. And the, now I've been recently getting into. Uh, SGs, um, Gibson uh, was kind enough to lend me out uh, an SG, a custom shop um, SG with uh, humbuckers in it because a lot of all my guitars kind of got. I put P90s in all the guitars sure. that you know, were uh, the Firebird. So uh, the humbuckers were a nice. It's a nice little, you know, kind of switch of, switching gears uh, from the P90s where it's not as hot. I feel like I got a little more control with it. Yeah, yeah even those neck. Humbuckers yeah, yeah, big, songs. fat, smooth, round tones. Really cool. So uh, that's been one of my favorite guitars playing now, and then and yet uh, your signature. Oh yeah, and then I got my uh, yeah. The Gibson were amazing. They built me this uh, this custom guitar. They said anything you want, you know, and it's kind of a hodgepodge of all different things. It's got a Firebird neck with a hollow body. Um, I think it's a 330 body, and it's got P90s in there and. Uh, the custom inlays and oh man they went all out so I can't thank those guys enough that's really cool yeah yeah so that's that's been that's that's probably one of my favorite that's one. can fans contact Gibson and order it or is it a one of a kind I, I think right now it's just a one of a kind but I think if people were interested in it I think they would they were interested in I don't know they, the dead, uh, yeah the has, deadbeat Deadbeat 330. Deadbeat 330. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll Frank see. If, yeah, if there's a demand for it, I love the guitar though. I really do. So. What about your drums? The sound of your ride mm -hmm. is so great on the record. Oh, like, are, thanks, you, are you sticking with one in particular? Do you have a favorite brand for your ride? Uh, for the ride cymbal? Yeah. Oh yeah. I know. I do. Yeah. Actually, that's the one thing I, I typically do bring uh, cymbal wise is the ride cymbal. I have um, it's just a, it's just a Sabian double A. It's real simple because I, I like that ping. I like that ping of the crown. Yeah. Um, and drum wise, I'm not too picky. Usually, what I use on tour is uh, it's uh, it's a Frankenstein kit. I have a Mapex Pro M kick drum that I've had since I was 18. It's a 20 inch deep cannon. It's good for him to jump off and just it's it's deep but also has that punch. Um, and then snare wise, I'm using two. I'm using a it's a, a Slingerland Slingerland uh, vintage um, from the 70s, and then also a um, uh, superphonic, Tamar superphonic, uh, snare drum, and then oh, the toms are all over the place. I don't even remember all of them. Uh, and then synth-wise, I have a Roland JDXI that I've been using a lot, the little red guy. It's really cool. And then a micro Korg as a backup. That's awesome. Yeah. So what is uh, the future look like for you? You teased earlier that you've been working on some music. Yeah. Um, as most bands don't like to do, we're not asking for a definitive date. Oh, yeah. But when can fans expect some new music from you guys? I think we're going to roll out a few more singles yeah. uh, for the rest of the year and just ride that out. But at least uh, in September. Yeah. yeah. And then I, I'm pretty sure we're going to try to release a full-length album early next year. Just trying to figure out the dates and and uh, and what else, or what's going to go on there. But yeah, that's probably the case for next year, early next year. Well, we want to thank you guys for your time. Uh, really looking forward to the show tonight. Uh, so once again, ladies and gentlemen, Black Pistol Fire. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Thank y'all so much for coming out. We really, really, really appreciate y'all doing what we're doing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Where do we go? Where do we go?